The Federal Aviation Regulations, or FARS, are rules prescribed by the Federal Aviation Administration FAA governing all aviation activities in the United States. The FARS are part of Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations CFR. A wide variety of activities are regulated, such as aircraft design and maintenance, typical airline flights, pilot training activities, hot air ballooning, lighter-than-air aircraft, man-made structure heights, obstruction lighting and marking, and even model rocket launches, model aircraft operation, SUAS and drone operation, and kite flying. The rules are designed to promote safe aviation, protecting pilots, flight attendants, passengers and the general public from unnecessary risk. Since 1958, these rules have typically been referred to as FARS, short for Federal Aviation Regulations. However, another set of regulations Title 48 is titled Federal Acquisitions Regulations, and this has led to confusion with the use of the acronym FAR. Therefore, the FAA began to refer to specific regulations by the term 14 CFR Part 20. Topic: <laughs> CFR 14 Overview. CFR Title 14 Aeronautics and Space is one of 50 titles comprising the United States Code of Federal Regulations, CFR. Title 14 is the principal set of rules and regulations sometimes called administrative law issued by the Departments of Federal Aviation Administration and Transportation, federal agencies of the United States regarding aeronautics and space. This title is available in digital and printed form, and can be referenced online using the Electronic Code of Federal Regulations ECFR. Current structure The table of contents, as reflected in the ECFR updated December 20, 2018, is as follows. Organization The FARs are organized into sections, called parts due to their organization within the CFR. Each part deals with a specific type of activity. For example, 14 CFR Part 141 contains rules for pilot training schools. The sections most relevant to aircraft pilots and AMTs aviation maintenance technicians are listed below. Many of the FARs are designed to regulate certification of pilots, schools, or aircraft rather than the operation of airplanes. Once an airplane design is certified using some parts of these regulations, it is certified regardless of whether the regulations change in the future. For that reason, newer planes are certified using newer versions of the FARs, and in many aspects may be thus considered safer designs. Part 1 Definitions and Abbreviations Part 13 Investigation and Enforcement Procedures Part 21 Certification Procedures for Products and Parts Part 23 – Airworthiness Standards, Normal, Utility, Acrobatic and Commuter Airplanes Part 25 – Airworthiness Standards, Transport Category Airplanes Part 27 – Airworthiness Standards, Normal Category Rotorcraft Part 29 – Airworthiness Standards, Transport Category Rotorcraft Part 33 – Airworthiness Standards, Aircraft Engines Part 34 – Fuel venting and exhaust emission requirements for turbine-engine-powered airplanes Part 35 – Airworthiness standards, propellers Part 36 – Noise standards, aircraft type and airworthiness certification Part 39 – Airworthiness directives Part 43 – Maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alteration Part 48 – Registration and marking requirements for small unmanned aircraft Part 61 – Certification, Pilots, Flight Instructors, and Ground Instructors Part 63 – Certification, Flight Crew Members Other Than Pilots Part 65 – Certification, Airmen Other Than Flight Crew Members Part 67 – Medical Standards and Certification Part 68 – Requirements for Operating Certain Small Aircraft Without a Medical Certificate Part 71 Designation of Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D, and Class E airspace areas, airways, routes, and reporting points Part 73 Special Use Airspace 
Part 91 General Operating and Flight Rules Part 97 Standard Instrument Approach Procedures Part 101 Moored Balloons, Kites, Unmanned Rockets, Unmanned Free Balloons, and Certain Model Aircraft Part 103 Ultralight Vehicles Part 105 Parachute Operations Part 107 Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Part 117 Flight and Duty Limitations and Rest Requirements, Flight Crew Members Part 119 Certification, Air Carriers and Commercial Operators Part 121 Operating Requirements, Domestic, Flag, and Supplemental Operations Part 125 Certification and Operations, Airplanes having a seating capacity of 20 or more passengers or a payload capacity of 6,000 pounds or more Part 129 Operations, Foreign Air Carriers and Foreign Operators of U.S. Registered aircraft engaged in common carriage Part 133 Rotorcraft external load operations Part 135 Operating requirements, commuter and on-demand operations and rules governing persons on board such aircraft Part 136 Commercial air tours and national parks air tour management Part 137 Agricultural aircraft operations Part 139 Certification of airports Part 141 Flight schools Part 142 Training centers Part 145 Repair stations Part 147 Aviation maintenance technicians schools Part 183 Representatives of the Administrator Topic. Regulations of interest The FARs are divided into tens of thousands of separate sections, many of which have large numbers of researchers using them on any given day. A few of the regulations particularly interesting to laypersons, relevant to current political issues, or of historical interest are listed below. Topic. Part 1 Many other FARs depend on definitions, which are found in Part 1. 1. Topic Part 23 Part 23 contains airworthiness standards required for issuance and change of type certificates for airplanes in these categories, 9 or less passengers, 12,500 pounds or less MTOW, normal, non-acrobatic operation bank angle utility, limited acrobatic operation 60 degrees acrobatic, no restrictions commuter category, multi-engine airplanes, 19 or less passengers, 19,000 pounds or less MTOW, non-acrobatic operation bank angle it also determines special aspects of aircraft performance such as stall speed e.g., for single-engine airplanes, not more than 61 knots, rate of climb not less than 300 feet per minute, takeoff speed not less than 1.2 x vs 1, and weight of each pilot and passenger 170 pounds for airplanes in the normal and commuter categories, and 190 pounds for airplanes in the acrobatic and utility categories. The Cessna 177, Cirrus State Route 20 and Piper PA-34 Seneca are well-known airplanes types that were certified to standards set out in FAR Part 23. Most of the federal aviation regulations, including Part 23, commenced on February 1, 1965. Prior to that date, airworthiness standards for airplanes in the normal, utility and acrobatic categories were promulgated in Part 3 of the U.S. Civil Air Regulations. Many well-known types of light airplane, like the Cessna 150 and Piper Cherokee are certified to these older standards, even though they remained in production after 1965. <laughs> part 25 This part contains airworthiness standards for airplanes in the transport category. The Boeing 737 and later types, and Airbus A300 series, are well-known airplane types that were certified according to standards set out in FAR Part 25. Transport category airplanes are either Jets with 10 or more seats or a maximum takeoff weight MTOW greater than 12,500 pounds 5,670 kilograms, or 
propeller-driven airplanes with greater than 19 seats or a MTOW greater than 19,000 pounds kilograms. This part is organized into six subparts, to specify design criteria for each of A. General B. Flight C. Structure D. Design and construction E. Powerplant F. Equipment For example, Part 25, Subpart D has section headings for General Control surfaces Control systems Landing gear Floats and hulls Personnel and cargo accommodations Emergency provisions Ventilation and heating Pressurization Fire protection Miscellaneous Most of the Federal Aviation Regulations, including Part 25, commenced on February 1, 1965. Prior to that date, airworthiness standards for airplanes in the transport category were promulgated in Part 4B of the U.S. Civil Air Regulations which was in effect by November 1945. Effective August 27, 1957, Special Civil Air Regulation Senior 422 was the basis for certification of the first turbine-powered transport airplanes, such as the Boeing 707, the Lockheed Electra, and the Fairchild 27. Senior 422A became effective July 2, 1958, and was superseded by Senior 422B, effective August 29, 1959. Only a few airplanes were certified under Senior 422A, such as the Gulfstream 1 and the CL-44. First-generation turbine-powered transport category airplanes such as the DC-8, DC-9, and B-727, were originally certified under Senior 422B. Senior 422B was recodified with minor changes to 14 CFR Part 25, which became effective February 1965. <laughs> part 27 This part contains airworthiness standards for rotorcraft in the normal category. Rotorcraft up to 7,000 pounds maximum takeoff weight and nine or fewer passengers are type certified in this part. Examples of rotorcraft certified in this part are the Robinson R44, Schweizer 300 and the Bell 429. <laughs> part 29 This part contains airworthiness standards for rotorcraft in the transport category. Rotorcraft with more than 7,000 pounds maximum takeoff weight and 10 or more passengers are type certified in this part. Rotorcraft with more than 20,000 pounds maximum takeoff weight must be certified to additional category A standards defined in this part. Topic Part Ninety One Topic Section Ninety One Point Three B This regulation states that the pilot in command is the party directly responsible for, and is the final authority as to, an aircraft being operated. Additionally, this regulation states that in an emergency requiring immediate action, the pilot in command may deviate from any regulation contained within Part 91 to the extent required to handle the emergency. <laughs> Temporary flight restrictions the pertinent sections of the FAR 14 CFR sections 91.137, 91.138, 91.139, 91.141, 91.143, 91.145, 91.145 99.7 describe temporary flight restrictions TFR. A TFR is a geographically limited, short-term, airspace restriction, typically in the United States. Temporary flight restrictions often encompass major sporting events, natural disaster areas, air shows, space launches, and presidential movements. Before the September 11, 2001 attacks, most TFRs were in the interest of safety to flying aircraft with occasional small restrictions for presidential movements. 
Since 9-11, TFRs have been routinely used to restrict airspace for 30 nautical miles around the President, with a 10 nautical mile radius no-fly zone for non-scheduled flights. They are also available to other high-profile figures such as presidential and vice-presidential candidates though not all do so, as Senator John Kerry, who did not ask for any TFR during the 2004 election. TFRs are deeply unpopular with pilots in the general aviation sector. Large presidential TFRs frequently close off not only the airport Air Force One is using but nearby airports as well. Others, including the Transportation Security Administration, argue that they are necessary for national security. The responsibility for screening requests for TFR and for subsequent granting or denying them lies with the FAA's Office of System Operations Security. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Two-way radio communications failure. Section 91.185 of the Federal Aviation Restrictions deals with loss of radio communications while in flight. If a loss of radio communications were to be encountered during VFR conditions, or if VFR conditions are encountered after loss of communication with the ground and other aircraft, the pilot of the aircraft shall continue the flight under VFR and land as soon as practicable. If, however, the failure occurs in IFR conditions and or the VFR conditions are not forthcoming, the pilot should continue under the following conditions. Route, the pilot will follow, the route assigned in the last contact with ATC before loss of communication, or, if being radar vectored, continue direct to the radar fix specified in the vector clearance. In the absence of an assigned route, the pilot will follow the route advised by ATC. In the absence of an ATC assigned or advised route, the pilot will follow the route set down in the flight plan. Altitude The pilot will continue at the highest of the following altitudes or flight levels the altitude assigned in the last contact with ATC before loss of communication, the minimum altitude for IFR operations, the altitude advised by ATC to be expected in a further clearance. Topic. Private, commuter, and commercial operations For all pilots, there is an important distinction in the parts that address classes of flight. These parts do not distinguish type of aircraft, but rather type of activity done with the aircraft. Regulations for commuter and commercial aviation are far more intensive than those for general aviation, and specific training is required. Hence, flights are often referred to as Part 20 operations, to specify which one of the different sets of rules applies in a particular case. Also, flight schools will often designate themselves as Part 61 or Part 141 to distinguish between different levels of training and different study programs they could offer to the students. Part 61 is certification for all pilots, flight instructors, and ground instructors. Part 63 is certification for flight crew members other than pilots, such as flight engineers and flight navigators. Part 65 is certification for airmen other than flight crew members, such as air traffic control tower operators, aircraft dispatchers, mechanics, repairmen and parachute riggers. Part 91 is general operating rules for all aircraft. General aviation flights are conducted under this part. Part 91, Subpart K, prescribes operating rules for fractional ownership programs. Part 107, FAA SUAS Part 107, specifies regulations to fly under the small UAS rule or small unmanned aircraft systems in the National Airspace System (NAS). Small unmanned aircraft systems (SUAS) are those that weigh less than 55 pounds. Part 117 specifies flight and duty time limitations and rest requirements for flight crew members. Part 121 is scheduled air carrier airliners. Part 133 is external load helicopter operations. Part 135 is a set of rules with more stringent standards for commuter and on-demand operations. Part 141 is a more structured method for pilot training, based on FAA syllabus and other standards. Maintenance 
Part 21 is certification procedures for products and parts. Part 39 are airworthiness directives. Part 43 is maintenance, preventive maintenance, rebuilding, and alteration. Part 145 contains the rules a certificated repair station must follow as well as any person who holds, or is required to hold, a repair station certificate issued under this part. Charter Part 380 applies to public charter air transportation of passengers in interstate or foreign air transportation, whether furnished by a certificated commuter or foreign air carrier, or an air taxi operator, that directly engages in the operation of aircraft, or public charter operators. See also Airspace Flight permits Day-night average sound level Joint aviation requirements National security area Night aviation regulations Prohibited airspace Restricted airspace Safety pilot Special flight rules area Special use airspace Transport category <laughs>